Hello, my name is Martet and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm gonna talk about two Megabox samples I got in the November, December by monthly uh, subscription I have. And uh, the filaments I have in this video is uh, from Gizmo Dorks. Uh, it's a POM alkyl material that uh, is a, a very special filament type. I haven't seen much about this filament. Uh, the other one is uh, from Colorfab uh, called Engine Copolyester. And those two uh, filaments uh, gave me very different results as you will see in the video. But let's have a look after the intro. So the first filament I'm going to talk about is from Colorfab and is a NGN co-polyester. Uh, this one uh, printed out uh, best for me at 250 degrees, so it's rather uh, rather hot. Uh, it uh, says on the box if you get bad, bad uh, bonding, layer bonding, uh, you should increase temperatures and I was slowly increasing temperatures because at first when I printed at 240 degrees uh, I was getting rather poor layer adhesion and ended up at 250 or 260 degrees on the final prints and ended up even at 270 degrees uh, at the final final print I did uh, just to test it out and uh, so uh, this uh, filament likes to be printed rather hot and I didn't have any uh, stringing issues so even at those high temperatures it was giving me good print quality. Uh, one of the first tests I did was, uh, was this test here. I have broken into pieces. Uh, uh, this was uh, printed at 240 degrees and gave me really poor layer adhesion and uh, as you can see uh, the layers uh, were coming apart very easily and at 240 degrees uh, it was not work working very well uh, but print quality wise it was quite okay but uh, it was very brittle and, and layer adhesion was very poor at the lower temperatures and uh, I tried out 250 degrees uh, with this uh, stringing test and it came out uh, a little bit too stringy at the top most part and maybe I should have slowed down the print uh, at the top most part a little bit more uh, because of this uh, stringing issue uh, but uh, it was uh, otherwise coming okay and I had better layer adhesion at 250 degrees um, I printed then uh, the spritzing test at 250 degrees and um, it had uh, quite a number of uh, drooping issues as you can see so uh, maybe uh, this temperature is not working uh, very well for for drooping issues but uh, layer adhesion was was getting better and uh, as i increased the temperature um, i also printed out uh, this uh, sample and this was fastened here and this was at 240 degrees also and just popped right off so uh, if the parts are very thin like this one it breaks uh, really easily after the lower temperatures uh, and then printed out uh, this part here that I also break <laughs> but this was printed at 270 degrees and it looked uh, quite good and I really had to use some tools to break it apart. It, the layer adhesion at 270 degrees was was uh, very good so it was very difficult to break this and it didn't even break on the layer lines. It just broke into pieces and uh, so it can be uh, printed at a higher temperature to get a very strong uh, layer adhesion so that's definitely possible. So keep that in mind the lower temperatures are uh, not working for good layer adhesion. Uh, I then printed out my maker coin and that came out pretty good and there's no complaints I have about the maker coin. It just uh, looks pretty good. Uh, and I also decided to print a, a case around the GoPro that I use in the cabinet. And this is uh, a print that I printed out at 
260 degrees uh, and I, had, uh, I haven't done any cleanup on this and there's absolutely no stringing issues on this print. It just came out excellent and is uh, working quite well for me. I just took it off the camera to, to show you uh, for this video but uh, this was uh, printing on the bed like this and um, as you can see, printing for those parts came out pretty good. There's a, maybe a tiny amount of uh, drooping here, but uh, for short, shorter bridges, it's uh, not an issue, even at the higher temperatures. So this part is a functional part, and I'm going to use this on my GoPro setting in the printing cabinet. So overall, after I dialed in the, the settings for this filament, uh, it came out pretty good. So this engine co-polyester from Colorhub uh, was giving me good results after I had dialed in the settings. Uh, at the lower temperatures it was giving me poor layer adhesion, but uh, print quality was good at even at 270 degrees. So at that temperature I was getting very good layer adhesion. So uh, just try it out to print it out a little bit hotter than the recommended temperature of 230 to 250 degrees. To if you have uh, layer bonding issues, but uh, I was uh, quite happy with this filament. So the second filament I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, in this video is a POM Alkyl filament from Gizmodorks. And this filament is a, some special material uh, called a sterilin. Uh, it should be extremely strong and durable engineering polymer. And uh, this filament I was absolutely unable to print anything with. Uh, whatever I did, I had no means of getting any bad adhesion with this filament. I tried out absolutely everything the internet suggested and even though, though I found some information on the website that didn't work on, uh, on my PI sheet and I was having the PI bed at uh, 110 degrees uh, and even at 220 degrees I was not getting any better results. Um, they say on the website uh, you can't print this filament hotter than uh, 240 degrees because at that point uh, some gas will come out of the filament that is very dangerous and they recommend a fume management system and, and heated enclosure and, and whatnot to print with this filament and uh, after spending a one or two hours trying and researching and trying what I found and everything failed. I absolutely uh, was disappointed <laughs> with this filament and just gave up. Uh, I tweeted out to the manufacturer and they didn't respond on Twitter. So uh, they were not giving me any help on, on Twitter at least. But uh, if you have a use case for this filament and you know this material works in your case, that's good for you but for me this didn't work and I didn't want to spend too much time with this filament because of the fumes and and, and the issues uh, they state in regard of health issues with this filament as I uh, have my small printer make space in the living room and I don't want to uh, have any fumes coming out of the printer that will kill <laughs> anyone in this apartment my cats or myself so or my family so uh, I really was disappointed with this filament. It's uh, maybe a great material if you have some special use case and special equipment. But for everyday uh, 3D printing hobbyist, I don't think this filament has any place. <laughs> uh, from what I can't found on the internet, uh, it was just uh, not working for people. So I don't know if, if you have had good results uh, with this filament, please leave it in the comments of this video. And that would be interesting to try those settings out, but I, I was at least unable to use it. So for this video, I uh, had first uh, had uh, pretty good results with the Colorfab engine co-polyester filament after having dialed in uh, correct temperature settings. Uh, uh, I could manage to get very strong parts without uh, any number of stringing issues. And I uh, think this filament is something I would 
uh, used for mechanical parts. It uh, was working quite well after I got the settings in. The set second from Gizmo Works uh, was absolutely dreadful, <laughs> and I would I wouldn't uh, recommend this filament for a normal 3D printer use case. You have to be a specialist, I think, with special equipment to use this filament. So. Uh, but it was interesting to try out something that was impossible. Um, but that, uh, what I love about this Megabox samples, uh, sometimes you get filaments that you just print without any issues and they just came out great and sometimes they give you a quite a bit of a hassle and you maybe learn something if you, if you can find information or help online. But uh, I think uh, uh, for this filament at least it was not working for me. Uh, but for now, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.